Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. The um, This is Dave Boyce. The topic today was uh, advertised as the ROI of sales acceleration, but that's kind of boring. So um, I changed the topic to sales acceleration rock and roll style. We I just used a few um, examples from uh, 80s and 90s music to keep it interesting. The uh, In fact, there may be a 70s one in there, late 70s. Uh, depends on when The Clash recorded that song. I think it was late 70s. But anyway, we're going to spend a few minutes, and I know that you know the 14 minutes that we spend right now is all time that you could be using selling, so I want to be respectful of your time and get right down to business. We're talking about sales acceleration as a business project, not as a technology project. The, uh, the underlying bias through this whole thing is that science helps you sell more. What do I mean by that? Well, we're all very good at what we do. Uh, when we when we interact with a customer, we're you know, we're artists. We know how to read the tea leaves. We know how to read their verbal and nonverbal communication. We know how to identify their concerns and resolve their concerns and move them down the funnel and close uh, the deal. The problem is we don't always get in front of a person who is the buyer. Uh, and the more often we can get in front of a person who's a potential buyer, the more we can purvey our art. Well. Getting in front of that buyer is where science comes in. Um, there are there are ways to use data science to predict and prescribe how to get in front of the right person at the right time such that I can get a hold of that person if I'm using the telephone. And then when I do get a hold of that person, they are a potential buyer. Inside Sales, the company that I work with, is the is the leader in data science applied to selling and we and you know it's sales acceleration kind of at its finest we have over 6 trillion data points associated with 14 billion sales interactions all of which have been analyzed and organized so that we can be predictive and prescriptive using psychographic, firmographic, geographic, demographic, and histographic information about the, the prospect that we're considering engaging with. And we can get the right leads or prospects in front of you at the right time. That's the science part. So that you, or I as a salesperson, can have the right conversations and, be, and resolve the right concerns and identify the right roadblocks. That's the art part. So if we can get science and art uh, to act in concert, uh, we can do even better than just art alone. The, um, the topic of this is, is about sales acceleration. I want to get really super tactical about this. You know, if we're thinking about salespeople, it's about hitting my number this quarter. So let's get really tactical about what is sales acceleration, how do I make it work for me, and how do I count up the wins in dollars and cents? I really don't care about anything else. I want to make sure that, I, that the wins that I get out of a sales acceleration project are denominated in dollars and cents. So I've outlined a very simple formula here. Um, and this, this is where uh, I went back to 70s, 80s, 90s rock roots. Number one, know your rights. Know which formula drives you know, results in your sales motion. you gotta, you got to understand it first. Secondly, you got to go fight for your right. You got to find the pieces that you know you can influence in that formula and go after them hard. And then, you know, if you've identified that formula correctly and if you've identified the pieces of that formula that are going to drive benefit for you, the rest of it is about letting that play out and stepping back and getting paid. Counting our wins and getting paid. So let's start with the sales formula. Any salesperson or sales team that you've ever known that's been good at what they do has been good at one or more of the following things. This is very simplistic. I hesitate to even call it math. This is barely arithmetic, but it's what drives sales. Either they've worked harder, meaning they've got higher volume, so I'm starting on the left here, the number of attempts is higher. So you all know the person who, is, who spends more time calling, more time emailing, more time following up, shows up earlier, leaves later, you know, so they, they can be higher volume and or 
for some reason they're better at getting a conversation to happen. This may have to do with science. It may have a little bit to do with art, um, knowing which leads to follow up with from an artistic standpoint. But science can really help you with that. But there are some people who just know which leads to go after. And if you, I can get more conversations for every attempt, I'm, you know, I'm better off. Or once they get someone on the phone, they're really good at converting them. So this is this is pure art, right? Um, if I get them on the phone, I'm better than anybody at converting them. You, you, we all know those people or those teams. And the final thing that factors in is deal size. You know, not only can I get them over the line, but I can get them over the line for slightly more than the next guy. So some combination of this, volume, contact rate, conversion rate, annual contract value or deal size is what determines the output of my sales efforts. Now some of those um, things can be changed in very short order and some of them take a little bit of time. We're talking about how do I hit my number this quarter? So I'm obviously I'm going to gravitate towards the things that can be changed quicker. Um, and in, on this slide, you know, just thinking about inside sales technology that can be implemented to impact volume, contact rate, conversion rate, and uh, deal size. The one that we can get out of the gates quickest is contact rate, 14 days. The one that has huge impact but may take longer are um, conversion rate and deal size. Those things, um, you know, take some data science, and we, I've got to get those data science in place, get the models trained, and, and let that thing get up to speed. But contact rate we can affect right out of the gates. So let me give you an example. This is a generalist team, an inside team. By generalist, I mean it's cradle to grave. They go from lead um, qualification all the way through to deal. Their existing, in this example, their existing effort is 75 dials per desk per day on average. 18% of the time that I dial the phone, I actually get someone to pick up the phone. percent of the time that I get them to pick up the phone, I can get them all the way through the rest of the funnel and to a deal. So that's five in every thousand. And the average deal size, if I get them over the line, is 2,500. So we're talking about a selling to SMB, generalist model. Every day that a rep shows up to work, she brings in $169. Now, we're probably worried if we have a team like that because that barely, if even, pays for the sales time to bring in $169. But what are the different tweaks? Let's say that I told you that the benchmark for that type of team and that type of motion is not $75 a day, but it's $125 a day. And what if I told you that, on average, the contact rate doesn't have to be 18%. It can be 38% if you apply some, some changes to your approach. Then what, you know, then what motion would we prescribe? Well, gosh, I may not want to sign up for 125 dials a day, but if you tell me that's what best practice is, maybe I'll go for 105. And I may not totally believe you that 38% is kind of the benchmark on contact rate. We're only at 18 now, but hey, why don't we go for 25 and see where we get. And by the way, with some of this data science that we're using, if I get in front of the right customers, could I talk myself into you know, from 0.5% conversion rate to 0.6% conversion rate, just a, a small um, increase. And if I'm getting the right customers on the phone, could I get them closed not at 2,500 on average, but at 2,700 on average? Each of those in itself seems like a very doable thing. But the interesting thing about the math is that it all flows through to now result in $425 of one business each day that a rep shows up to work. That's two and a half times what I was getting before by making these marginal improvements. Well, how would I go about that? The first thing I need to do is understand my motion. Um, I need to understand exactly um, where in this chain I can make impact. I, of course, I'm going to focus on the 14-day impact first and the 30-day impact second and then the 45 and the 60 days. In order to figure that out, I need to know where I am um, today. And in, so I need to map out my process. This is an example of a customer of ours 
who has real metrics at each stage of their funnel. They are making 20 dials a day. They are responding to um, inbound inquiries only. This is an inbound team only, inbound web inquiries. On average, they get to they respond within 18 hours. They're making 20 dials a day. They're making 2.6 attempts um, on each lead before they move it into a nurturing bucket. And then they are pursuing kind of their normal conversion rates down the funnel to opportunity. Well, that same set of decisions that we talked about on the last slide, and they say, you know what, we could get to 50 dial. We could get to 50 dials a day. We could respond within 10 minutes. Um, we could be more persistent on these leads and touch them more than 2.6 times. And we could actually open up the aperture and get more through this engine than we're getting through right now. Sure. Well, what would the result of that be? For this particular client, the result was over $400,000 in additional one business per month or almost $5 million per year. So we've now gone through the stages of you know, understanding, knowing your rights, understanding where, you know, what you're entitled to and what you should be shooting for, um, fighting for your right, which is let me go attack specific places in my funnel to get specific benefits, and then getting paid. So if you are implementing a sales acceleration strategy, I would think about it like this. One, follow the money. Who cares about the technology? Value is not created by technology. Value is created by process. Good process drives value. Technology supports good process. So once you've identified the right process, then you layer in the technology to make sure that you stay on process and that you've got good visibility and good accountability around the correct process to drive value. But the way that the value is measured is in dollars and cents. It's not measured in bug count. It's not measured in uptime. It's not measured in anything other than dollars and cents. So I've got to denominate my success plan in terms of dollars and cents. I then set my revenue targets in dollars and cents. I build an implementation plan for the process and the technology that matches that, and then I measure, measure, measure. I got to make sure that when things are working, I do more of them, and when they're not working, I do less of them. We would love to help you. So, um, Inside Sales is set up to do sales acceleration projects um, all day, every day. Every time you have an interaction with the platform, your team does, the platform gets smarter. And every time the platform gets smarter, it's able to make more profitable predictions and prescriptions so that your team can continue to improve their performance by pulling the levers in the sales formula. Um, you know, we've been lucky to work with thousands of customers who all see increases in revenue. That's how we measure projects. We'd love to work with you. If you're working on your own projects, I'd keep the same thing in mind. Follow the money. Um, Denominate your projects in terms of dollars and cents. Make your implementation plans match and measure, measure, measure. Thank you very much. You gave me 14 minutes of your time. We'd love to work with you in any aspect, in any way that we can. Our goal is the same as yours, to help you make more money. Um, have a great day, and I'm out. Talk to you.